I'm a radiation oncologist at UCLA. My specific areas of interest and expertise are in SBRT for prostate cancer, cytotactic body radio, advanced radiation for prostate cancer that really condenses the treatment into as few as five treatments. When a patient comes for their treatment, we're using an x-ray to aim our radiation. And typically, we put these markers into the prostate called fiducial markers. They're tiny gold seeds, maybe the size of a grain of rice or so. And they show up on any x-ray or CT machine, and we use those to kind of indirectly track the prostate. CyberKnife is a type of device. It's a brand name. But one thing it does have is a repeated x-ray imaging during the treatment. So every 90 seconds or so, an x-ray is taken, and it shows where the where the three gold markers in the prostate are, and that allows it to kind of triangulate the position of the prostate. Having a full bladder and an empty rectum is, is pretty important. What it means is that it will standardize the anatomy. And, and so I recommend that cyber knife treatments can be a little bit longer because they're doing the repeated x-rays and moving around. So they can be on the order of 30 uh, or more minutes. Why are we doing the full, you know, the very full bladder? We're doing the very few full bladder because we want to minimize the dose of radiation to the bladder wall. Think about the bladder like a balloon. We don't really care about the dose of radiation inside the balloon. That's, wa that's water or urine, right? That's not going to be affected. It's really the wall. So we want it to be full so that less of the wall is going to be radiated. What's going to cause the wall to be radiated? Because we have to put a safety margin around the prostate because it's moving, right? And the margin that you need to use for an x-ray-based treatment is bigger. For example, our historical x-ray-based margin has been four millimeters. For the radio recurrent prostate cancer, which means somebody that has a recurrence after primary radiation for their prostate cancer. So they got radiation maybe five years ago, their PSA is rising, they get one of these newer scans or an MRI, they, they find the cancer has come back in the prostate. We are using this device in that situation as well. It's not the only option for those patients. And that's a longer and separate discussion. But, you know, you can do SBRT. You can do brachytherapy on those patients. If I am doing SBRT, I, I would be doing it with this machine because of some of the benefits that, that I think it presents. For the post-op setting, we are using it. We are primarily using it for patients that are getting the shorter course of radiation in the postoperative setting, which we offer on our clinical trial. And, and that's a, for a pragmatic reason. Uh, first, we are able to do that same type of tracking. In this case, we're tracking the, the rectal wall, which is the back part of uh, the target volume for someone that has a recurrence after surgery. So we're tracking that. There's no prostate, obviously, to track. But as you brought up, these treatments are longer, and I think that that can be a little bit more of a challenge for someone that is a post-op treatment, right? Because they might have more difficulty holding their urine. 